first and for, uh, foremost, this election um, is expected to be a historic election because of the expected turnout. Um, our polling, together with The Hill, indicates that 68% of likely voters have already voted, and that number is roughly 100 million voters, uh, which is significant, and a majority of the vote that was cast the last time around. Out of the 32% that remain, that vote is expected to be about 48 million, which was placed this election at a turnout of 148 million uh, and possibly above that, and make it the largest turnout election on both the Republican side and the Democratic side in modern American history, even higher than 2008 when Barack Obama was elected, which is the election that holds the record right now. The dynamic of the race has been a very interesting one. Um, Biden has had a comfortable and steady lead really since um, he was nominated and uh, since May when the coronavirus issue started to reflect itself in the horse race and in President Trump's uh, approval number. Uh, there was a tactical miscalculation really on the part of uh, the White House and the administration to hand off the responsibility for the coronavirus and its, the management of the crisis to the states, which really boomeranged on the administration. And it was still factored on the president and perceived as the administration and the president stepping back from the responsibility of managing um, uh, the virus and the consequences of the virus. This gave Biden in many polls that we've done together, but also in many other third party polls, uh, a comfortable advantage that was roughly at around 10 points or averaged at roughly around eight to 10 points. He maintained this advantage heading into the conventions at the end of August. However, after the conventions, there was a tightening of, of the race in September towards Trump or in Trump's favor. And the horse race narrowed to about four to six points difference within that range. October, as we know, was a bad month for the president, um, starting off with a very contentious debate, which Americans did not react uh, well to. And the president was largely seen as the person to blame. And then moving on to the president being, himself being infected with the coronavirus, which highlighted uh, some of the steps that could have been taken from wearing masks to a potential mask man mandate, and also a much more strict perspective from the administration on the coronavirus that really hammered the president's uh, ratings and also um, uh, it reflected itself in the horse race. So in October, we had actually a widening of the spread and of the horse race in Biden's favor. However, the dynamic has really shifted in the last 10 days uh, of the election. And the horse race is narrowing. What we're seeing is that Biden has a very, very comfortable lead amongst the vote by mail, uh, the early vote that that has been cast by mail that roughly breaks 60 to 40 in his favor. The in-person vote before the election is even at 50-50 in our latest polling together with the Hill um, and has narrowed significantly in the course of the last week um, in favor of Trump and in favor of uh, the Republicans. And then the day of election today's vote is expected to be 60-40 roughly in Trump's favor, possibly even higher. So by all means, uh, Biden is entering into today's election with a solid advantage because of the early vote. It roughly breaks, uh, I would say, 58 uh, to 42% uh, in, uh, in Biden's favor, net net, the early vote. Uh, and the name of the game today is turnout. And the more turnout there is, polling indicate the more indicates the more that turnout will be in Trump's advantage. 
and um, you know the couch potato voters, uh, the voters that don't usually vote, their profile has historically been le- uh, lower educated, downcast white voters. And so this is a group that is part of Trump's base and will benefit Trump. So keep a very, very close look at turnout today and the numbers that are reported as votes are counted and um, we go through uh, the evening. And, um, you know, by all indications, it looks like Biden will win the popular vote on a national level. However, many of the battleground states are toss-ups. Um, and this is really reflected also in the fact that both campaigns have been um, very active in battleground states over the course of the last five days or so with multiple stops and multiple rallies and really trying to get out the vote. This is an indication, clear indication from both camps that Florida is a battleground, Pennsylvania is a battleground, North Carolina is a battleground, uh, Wisconsin is a battleground, Arizona is a battleground. So it's a wide map.